guys, it's been quite some time, but look who's back. Happy New Year. Things have stabilized a bit. Business is absolutely nuts. I had to reorganize. It got so crazy, I overwhelmed my little organizational capacity. So I had to uh, go into hermit mode and, and reorganize. Things are getting nuts. You can probably see we got stuff over there. I got... Um, I got some more Ampeg stuff coming. Uh, I have a Fender Basement reissue that's got some gremlins. We need to, to flesh that stuff out, and we're going to do it. Um, but here's my first Paul Reed Smith amp that's on the bench today. When, and what am I looking at? This is a Sunzera 20 two-channel amp. Uh, the owner is having some issues with the amp intermittently and... Um, on its own accord, switching channels without any input from, from the owner. And who wants that? So um, a little dive online revealed that there's really not much in the way of documentation for these guys. So we're kind of flying half blind. I said half blind because I did manage to find a partial schematic of the preamp, which does cover some... Um, what appears to be some relay stuff here, and I'm going to zoom in. It's just not the best way for me to present a schematic to you guys. Something with this uh, screen and a white balance just never quite works out, but I do hope to get that sorted out this year. So anyway, let's get her warmed up. I'm going to go ahead and switch on the power supply here, and I'm listening to the, uh, the lovely sound. Look at that. Even in standby mode, it looks like uh, we tripped her. I heard the relays kick on before she was taken off a of standby, so I'm already liking part of what I see. What is that? Well, this is a tremendous speaker. People write this off because it, it comes um, OEM or stock and some lower to mid-level amps. But this speaker sounds phenomenal in a Fender type circuit. Um, it sounds amazing in a Classic 30. So if you have a Classic 30, put one of these in there. It's transformative. Really nice. All right, Reese. Uh, so here we are with the thing, the whole thing, and nothing but the thing. There's certainly no circuit breaker here present. I'm wondering if there's a thermistor, though, around the power supply. It looks like there might be. It's the only thing I can see resetting itself. Um, it looks like someone did a little bit of work here. I'm seeing a bit of a crispy spot. On the edge here, and actually this isn't the first Paul Reed Smith amp I've worked on. I recall doing one of the higher end ones and I, I recall also being impressed with the chassis solder joints that I saw there. And the same goes for the Sur amps. But um, let's get this thing going. The old trusty uh, Agilent 34401A. Let's check continuity. See if this fuse has departed. It hasn't. That's the B plus fuse. We got several more on board that we're gonna check out. At least I saw them, didn't I? Yes, I did. So, um, looks like 100 ohm resistors. Nice. Okay. So this board doesn't look, um, well, God, I don't wanna have to remove this board. Um, I do appreciate the flying leads and uh, the ability to solder from the top side. I did take a peek uh, along the bottom side. Um, so these look like through plated. Um, what is that? Okay. Yeah, they're through plated. So that gives me a little bit of um, hope that this is not beyond redemption. I don't know if I can make this shot possible, but there's something I want you to see. Okay, yeah, you can see that. So focus on the needle right up there. Can I turn this? Yeah. All right, let me get a chopstick. 
All right, focus on this needle here. Now, the tube heater's drawing current should, um, should show up as a dip in AC line voltage here. So let's see if that's the case. Now, um, I'll, I'll tell you right now, a spoiler alert, it is the case that despite the power indicator turning off, the amp is still drawing current. Two. So it's only recovering a couple of volts as the power indicator turns off. Let's see what's up. But certainly the, the tube heaters are having a good time. Standby's off. There's sound passing through the speaker cabinet. So something's up with this low voltage supply perhaps, and that wouldn't be a, no pun intended, a indicative of the condition of the switching circuit. Let's take her off and listen for any relays. Let me switch channels. Is that doing it? No. That must be a bright switch. Rolls up. Everything on 12. 12 o'clock, that is. It's not switching channels. Let's see if I uh, manipulate the foot switch jack. No. All right, stand by. Let's get her off. It's, so there's a correlation between the power indicator light and the ability to switch channels. With, with the light off, I'm not getting anything. There, there's no change of channels. So uh, let's see. What's up with these regulators? Are these regulators? I need to uh, zoom in and uh, check these numbers. I can't really see them from here. See if they're a plus and minus supply. And if they're the issue, or if we have a failed supply cap, 